like to welcome uh, Algebra 1 students to their first video. There are probably a couple of geometry students watching this also because factoring and uh, solving quadratics is something that we are using now also in our circles units. So hopefully the algebra folks don't mind the geometry folks are watching their video because, you know, that's, no one cares. Um, here is the uh, schedule for Unit 8, barring additional snow days or weather catastrophes. Today we're going to work on 8.1 and 8.2. We'll look at monomials and factoring and how to use a distributive property. And we'll get some homework from that, uh, some practice from that that you guys will hopefully, uh, who knows when we'll see each other again, but some practice from that. I think you'll see that this stuff is pretty straightforward and pretty simple, especially based on what we've been doing because it's essentially that in reverse. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at 8-1. Uh, it's monomials and factoring. Um, so let's take a look. So the first thing we have to understand is that a, a factored mon factoring a monomial is similar to factoring a whole number. Um, a monomial is in factored form when it's expressed as the product of primes and variables, and no variable has an exponent greater than one. So it, it's really just breaking it down into its parts. Okay, we look at the example: 20x cubed y squared factored completely. Well, first we're going to factor the 20. Um, so 1 times 2 times 10 gives us 20. And then the x cubed is 3x's, and the y squared is 2y's. Um, we, we break down the 10 into 2 and 5 even more. And so in factored form, it's, it's basically just listing out all of its parts. So if we did that for 34x fourth uh, y cubed, um, we'd get 1 times 34, or 1 times uh, 2 times 17. 17 is a prime number. And so then we're just listing how many x's there are. So there's 4 and 3 y. So that is factored form, okay? Completely factored uh, for that monomial. If you take a look here at 1b, uh, we have negative 1 times 52, uh, or negative 1 times 2 times 26, or negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 13. And that, those are prime now. And then we just have A, A, and B. And that's it. So for factored form, you're just breaking it as far down as you can into the factors. The greatest common factor is a term that you've heard before, but probably or maybe have never used it with monomials. Uh, greatest common factor, we get that. It's the greatest number that is a factor of both of the original numbers. So we're usually given a pair, sometimes three, uh, sometimes more monomials. And then we're asked to find the greatest common factor. Sometimes uh, putting the number, the monomial, into factored form helps us with this. So as you can see, if you break down 12a squared b squared c into its factored form, and then 18ab cubed into its factored form, and then you find what's in common. So they each have a 2, they each have one 3. There's a 2 here and a 3 here, but they aren't shared. Uh, here we have an a shared and a b shared and another b shared. So the greatest common factor would be those all put back together. So 2 times 3 times a times b times b, or 6ab squared. Some of you are going to want to break it down into factor form, break each term down into factor form to find the GCF. And others of you are going to have an easier time just by looking at them. You can look at 12 and 18 and know that the greatest common factor there is 6. a squared and a, the greatest thing they have in common is the smaller of the two, so a. And then b squared and b cubed, the greatest thing they have in common is b squared. And then this one doesn't have a c, so there isn't a c in common. Let's take a look at 2a, and I'll, I'll, we'll see what I mean. Uh, as far as numerically, 6 and 18, 6 is the greatest common factor. Uh, there's an x on this term, but there is no x on that term, so it's not in common. And then this has a y cubed, and this has 1y. So as far as being in common, all they've got is 6y. So that's it. Uh, here, 11 and 21, there is no constant uh, that they have in common. This one has a squared, that one has a, so a, b, and b squared, b. So that's it for that one. a, b is the co greatest common factor. For 30 and 50, you got to find the largest number that goes into both, which would be 10. And then q cubed and q squared, so q squared is the greatest thing they have in common. r and r squared, that would be r and T and T, so they both have T, T and T, like the channel or dynamite. Uh, so there's your answers for those three practice problems. Let's take a look at a real world example of a GCF. 
If a florist has 20 roses and 30 tulips to make bouquets, what is the greatest number of identical bouquets she can make without having any leftovers? So that's, uh, that's GCF. How many of each kind of flower will be in each bouquet? So find the GCF of 20 and 30. The GCF there is 10. So the florist can make 10 bouquets since 2 times 10 is 20 and 3 times 10 is 30. Each bouquet will have 2 roses and 3 tulips. Pretty simple. So what is the greatest possible value for the widths of two rectangles if their areas are 84 square inches and 70 square inches respectively and the length and width are whole numbers? So the greatest possible value for the widths of two rectangles if their areas are 84 and 70. So again, we're finding the greatest common factor of 84 and 70. So here we're just looking for the width. So we're looking for one term. So uh, if you're not sure, you know, sometimes the numbers get larger and the math is harder to do in your head. So just Let's take 84 and take it apart, okay? So 84 is 1 times 84, obviously, or 2 times 42, uh, which is 1 times 2 times 2 times 21, which is 1 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. Uh, also, n not a bad idea every now and then, just to make sure that you've factored something correctly. If you want to put it back in your calculator and do 1 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 7, you should get the number you started with. So not a bad idea sometimes to to put the term back in, uh, the terms back in, multiply them, and make sure you got the right number. Now let's do 70. So 70 is 1 times 70, obviously, or 1 times 2 times 35, or 1 times 2 times 5 times 7. Now we're looking for what they have in common. Well, they both have a 1, so there's that. They both have at least one two. This one has a second two, but this one doesn't. Three here, but no three here. Five here, but no five here. But they each have a seven. So one times two times seven is 14. And that's our answer. Okay, that's the greatest possible value for the width. Let's take a look. That's it for 8-1. Uh, we'll come back at the end, and I'll tell you what homework you need to do or what practice problems you need to do from 8-1. Uh, that was a little fast. We're going to look at how we can use the distributive property to factor polynomials. We've used the distributive property to multiply polynomials. This is the same thing in reverse. So if, for example, you're given 1.6w squared plus 6w, you find the greatest common factor of the two terms, and you pull it out. Uh, that's why we do 8-1 before we do 8-2. So you have to find the GCF of each term, like it says right here. Uh, the GCF here for each term is 9y. And again, some of you are going to do this part here where you write it out in the factored form. That's pretty god-awful. And some of you aren't. And if you aren't, there's that, that's fine. You need to do whatever parts you need to do. This part right here, where you write it out into factored form, you know, if you need to do that, you should. Uh, eventually, you'll do so many of them that you'll get really good at it and you won't have to do that anymore. When we take the GCF out, we're dividing it, okay? So then this becomes 27y squared divided by 9y, and I'm left with just 3y. And then 18y divided by 9y, which is just 2. We're changing the way the terms look and then sort of doing the distributive property in reverse. Not sort of, that's, that's exactly what we're doing. Here, um, the GCF was 2ab. And so we factor that out, and we're left with negatives. You, you do need to be careful about signs, okay? That's, that's a, you've got to be careful about signs. So let's take a look at the practice ones. The greatest common factor between 15w and negative 3v is 3. So now we have 3 times 5w, and that's minus 3 times v. And then we're going to pull the 3 out using the distributive property. So this is 3 times parentheses 5w minus 3. Easy as that. Okay, let's take a look at 1b. The greatest common factor here, first we look at all the coefficients, so 7, 21, and 1. So there isn't a, a, a constant that we're going to pull out. ut squared, t squared, u and t squared, and then ut. Well, this one right here, ut, is the greatest common factor. It's the smallest of them all variable-wise, and so it's the largest thing that we're able to pull out of all of them. So that's a ut and then if I take 7u squared t squared divided by ut, I'm left with 7ut plus 21u divided by u is 1, and t squared divided by t is t, so 21t minus ut divided by ut. Anything divided by itself is 1, okay? 7ut plus 21t 
goodness gracious. All these T's and pluses. 21T minus 1. Okay? That's all times UT. The first one. Yikes. Alright? Let's take a look at the next page. So using the distributive property to factor polynomials with four or more terms is called factoring by grouping. Okay, so this is a little bit different, factoring by grouping. Because terms are put into groups and then factored. Grouping, uh, you got to remember for grouping symbols we're going to use parentheses. The distributive property is then applied to a common binomial factor. So there's really some steps here. So we're given like this example, ax plus bx plus ay plus by. So we factor the first set and then we factor the second set. So now we have x times a plus b plus y times a plus b. And then what we're able to do is we're able to pull out this x and y and put them here and then a and b and put them right here. Looks complicated sometimes when we just look at it numerically. So let's take a look at some number examples and see if we can't see the problems a little bit better. So for example, 4qr plus 8r plus 3q plus 6. So the greatest common factor here is 4r. We divide that out and we're left with q plus 2. The greatest common factor here is 3. We divide that out and we're left with q plus 2. When we factor by grouping, if we've done it correctly, we'll notice that we get the same binomial. Now I'm able to pull the 4 plus 3, 4r plus 3 right there, the q plus 2 right there, and that's the end of it. Right? A really nice thing about these problems is if I then go back, if I were to multiply 4r plus 3 times q plus 2, using whatever method you like, vertical, grid, horizontal, foil, whatever, we would get the term that we started with. Okay, we get 4r times q is 4rq, or qr, alphabetically, plus 4r times 2, which is 8r, uh, then 3 times q, which is 3q, and then 3 times 2, which is 6, which is, if you look over here, it's this term that we started with. Okay, so if you put it back together, you should be able to check your answer. It's a really nice thing about this unit when we're factoring is that when you multiply it back, you should get the same thing. So let's look right here. We have Rn plus 5n minus R minus 5. So let's factor out of the first one. Let's just factor out an n. So I have n times R plus 5. And then I know I'm trying to get R plus 5 again. Right now I have negative R minus 5. The greatest common factor there is actually negative 1. Okay, I factor out a negative 1. Negative r divided by negative 1 is r. And negative 5 divided by negative 1 is 5. The reason I do that is because I know that I want these two terms right here to be the same. Then I'm going to take my n minus 1 and write it separately. And that r plus 5. And that's it. Let's take a look over here. 3np plus 15p with well, the greatest common factor there is 3p. And I'm left with n plus 5. I got another minus minus here, so I'm going to factor out a negative again, uh, but this time a greatest common factor of negative 4. And I'm left with n plus 5 again. And that's 3p minus 4 times n plus 5. If you feel like you need another explanation of this, feel free to go up here and check the personal tutors right there. Okay, if you're on your online book, you can just click that and get some help with it. If not, uh, let me know in the comments below or tweet me or email me or School Fusion message me or something and I can direct you to some places where there's some more explanations that maybe will give you a different perspective that you might need. Um, it says right here it can be helpful to recognize that when binomials are additive inverses of each other. Um, for example, 6 minus a is the same thing as negative 1 times a minus 6. So sometimes you're going to have to factor out a negative and use it to change the order. We can see down here we had 6 minus k and right here we have k minus 6. So if you factor out a negative 1, that becomes k minus 6 also. And remember, we want them to be the same. So that's why we, we show you that. Um, take a look right here. If we factor out a c, this becomes c times 1 minus 2d. And then over here, the greatest common factor is 4. So let's factor out a 4. c plus 4, and that's 2d minus 1. Well, we need this to be the other direction. We need this to be positive 1 and negative 2d. So we're going to factor out a negative 1. Really what happens is we write this side again and this instead of being positive 4 we're factoring out a negative 4. And now I can switch these because of additive inverse or multiplicative inverse uh, and now I'm now I'm where I want to be. C minus 4 and then 1 minus 2d. Okay, Let's take a look at this one. 
3p and negative 2p squared, the greatest common factor there is just p. So I'm left to 3 minus 2p. This time, let's see, the greatest common factor is 9, but that's going to leave me with negative 2p. Um, well, let's, let's go ahead and let's just do it. Uh, plus 9, which leaves me with negative 2p plus 3. Here, they, these are the same. I just need to rewrite the order. So p, 3 minus 2p plus 9, and then I'm just going to change the order here because of the commutative property. And I'm good to go. p plus 9 and 3 minus 2p. Okay. Solving equations by factoring. Okay, some equations can be solved by factoring. Notice that in each case, at least one of the factors is zero in each of these cases right here. Basically, here's the rule. The zero product property says this. If I tell you that I'm thinking of two numbers, and I tell you that their product, or when I multiply them together, is zero, you automatically know that one of the numbers has to be zero. Okay, so we use that to solve by factoring. Here's what it looks like. Uh, if we tell you that to solve this, and I'm telling you this term right here, 2d plus 6, times this term right here, 3d minus 15. If I'm telling you that their product is 0, then really simply what you have to, you have to know that either that is 0 or that is 0. Okay? Um, so that's what we do. We take 2d plus 6, set it equal to 0, solve. We take 3d minus 15, set it equal to 0, and solve. Um, the nice thing that you're able to do down here to check your answer is you can substitute those numbers back in. If I put negative 3 into the equation, we get, we get a true equation. If I put positive 5 back into the equation, we get a true equation, 0 equals 0. So I know I've done it right. Really nice thing in this unit is that you can really check a lot of your answers. Uh, c squared equals 3c. To, to solve a quadratic, we always have to get it equal to 0. Okay, okay, must get it equal to 0. So that's the first step over here. Uh, when we get c squared equals 3c, we subtract 3c from both sides. So now it's equal to 0. Then I'm going to factor c times c minus 3 equals 0. And then I'm going to take each term, c and c minus 3, set them equal to 0, and solve. All right. So let's take a look at some practice ones down here. 3n times n plus 2. A bunch of you will probably start to be able to do these without showing all your work. So there's 3n equals 0 and n plus 2 equals 0. So over here, n equals 0. And over here, n equals negative 2. So those are our two answers. Okay. Some of you are going to get really good at this and just be able to look at it and solve. Here we're going to factor first. So I'm going to factor out an 8b and I'm left with b minus 5. And then we have 8b equals 0, so one of the answers is 0. And we have b minus 5 equals 0, so one of the answers is 5. Again, at any point, you can pause the video if you need to, plug these answers back in, check them, and, uh, and, and see that you're getting these correct. Here, we need to get it equal to 0 first, so I'm going to say x squared plus 10x equals 0. Then we're going to factor x times x plus 10. And then I'm going to set each one equal to 0. x equals 0, that's pretty easy. And then x plus 10 equals 0, so x equals negative 10. That's it. That's it for solving quadratics. Pretty simple stuff. Here's a word problem. Penny is a fox terrier who competes with her trainer in the agility course. I don't think the trainer competes in the agility course. I would like to see the trainer jump through this hoop here. That would be kind of be entertaining. Uh, within the course, Penny must leap over a hurdle. I don't know if they're calling that a hurdle. That's a hoop. But, uh, Penny's jump can be modeled by the equation h equals negative 16t squared plus 20t, where h is the height of the leap in inches at t seconds. Find the values of t when h equals 0. So really, very simply, they're giving us the equation. We're saying h equals 0, so they're setting it equal to 0 for us. We're going to factor and solve. Uh, so Penny's height is 0 at 0 seconds. That's because Penny started on the ground, because Penny's not a flying dog. And then at 1.25 seconds is when she lands, or he lands. I don't know if Penny is a... I guess Penny could be a boy dog name. I don't think it really matters. I had a dog named Gus when I was a kid, and she was a girl, so I guess who am I to judge? Um, so the hop of a kangaroo can be modeled by this equation, h equals 
24t-16t squared. It's really my parents' fault. We had a dog named Gus that was a girl. That's what happens when you let a two-year-old name the dog. Uh, so h represents the height of the hop in meters, and t is the time in seconds. Find the, uh, the values of t when h equals zero. So we have zero equals, and then let's factor this. Greatest common factor here is going to be 8t. Okay, 8t, and that's 3 minus 2t. And then we have, we're going to set each one of those equal to zero. So we have uh, 8t equals zero, so t equals zero. So obviously, when the can at zero seconds, when the kangaroo is on the ground, uh, no time has passed. And then we have 3 minus 2t equals zero. So I'm going to add 2t to both sides and then divide by 3. Uh, so I get 3 equals 2t and then 3 over 2 equals t. So here, t equals 1.5 seconds. Or 3 over 2 seconds, you know, depending on your whatever. I know most of my students know I would have left it as 3 over 2 seconds, but if 1.5 makes you feel better, because because whatever, then, I, then okay. Um, that's it, guys. That's it for the notes. Uh, the practice problems are, I need you to work on page 472, 11 through 27 odd, 28, and 29 through 33 odd, and number 34. Feel free to pause the video or go back here. I'm going to flip to the next page uh, to show you the other part of the assignment. And page 480, 15 through 51 odd, and 52 through 56. I know it seems like a lot, but some of these problems you guys are going to do in less than 10 or 15 seconds. So don't be overwhelmed by the number. Let me know how the video goes in the comments below or on Twitter or on, I don't know, where else you can find me, uh, Smoke Signal or Snowman uh, Sign, I don't know. Okay, have fun. See you in class whenever I see you.